It was a dark and stormy night. The rain lashed against the windows of my small apartment, casting eerie shadows that danced across the walls. I sat on my couch, stomach rumbling, eyes glued to the clock as the minutes ticked by. I had ordered a pizza over two hours ago, and it still hadn't arrived. I tried calling the pizza place again, but the line was busy. Frustration bubbled up inside me. This wasn't the first time my delivery had been delayed, but it was certainly the longest I'd had to wait. Usually the food showed up within 30 to 45 minutes, Max. Something must have gone wrong. Peering out the window, I could see the rain pouring down, obscuring my view of the street. The weather had taken a nasty turn since I'd placed my order. Maybe the delivery driver was having trouble navigating the storm. I tried to distract myself, flipping on the TV and channel surfing, but nothing could hold my attention. All I could think about was that delicious pizza waiting for me somewhere out there in the dark. My mouth watered at the thought of the melted cheese, the savory sauce, the crisp crust. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, I saw headlights pull up outside my building. My heart leapt the pizza was here. I jumped up from the couch and hurried to the door, ready to tip the driver and dig in. But when I peered out the window, I saw that it wasn't the familiar red and yellow logo of the pizza place. Instead, it was a plain white sedan. The driver remained in the car, not making any move to come to my door. Furrowing my brow, I opened the door and stepped outside, shielding my face from the rain. Hello, I called out, but the driver didn't respond. I cautiously approached the car, peering inside. The car was empty. Confused, I looked around, but there was no one else in sight. The street was deserted, save for the steady patter of the rain. Where had the driver gone? I hurried back inside, locking the door behind me. Something wasn't right. Had the driver gotten lost and then abandoned the car? Or had something more sinister happened? I tried calling the pizza place again, but this time the line was dead. Panic began to set in. I couldn't shake the uneasy feeling that something was very, very wrong. Glancing back out the window, I saw that the car was gone. It had vanished into the night, leaving no trace. My heart pounded in my chest as I tried to make sense of what was happening. Deciding I needed to investigate further, I grabbed my jacket and ventured back outside, braving the storm. The rain was coming down in sheets now, making it hard to see more than a few feet in front of me. I cautiously made my way down the sidewalk, searching for any sign of the mysterious driver or the pizza delivery. As I rounded the corner, I spotted something in the distance, the familiar red and yellow sign of the pizza place. Relief flooded through me. Maybe the driver had simply gotten lost and ended up at the restaurant. I hurried toward the shop, eager to get my food and put this strange incident behind me. But as I drew closer, I realized that the shop was dark, the open sign flickering ominously. That couldn't be right, the place should have been bustling with activity at this hour. I approached the front door and peered inside, but the interior was eerily empty. Unease crept up my spine. Surely the restaurant wouldn't be closed this early, especially on a Friday night. I tried the door, but it was locked. Pressing my face against the glass, I scanned the interior, looking for any sign of life. That's when I saw a figure slumped on the ground behind the counter. My breath caught in my throat as I realized it was a person, unmoving. Without thinking, I began pounding on the door, calling out for help. But there was no response. The figure remained still, and the restaurant stayed dark and silent. Panic gripped me as I raced back down the street, desperate to find a phone to call the police. But as I turned the corner, I froze in my tracks. The white sedan was back, parked right in front of my building. My heart pounded in my ears as I stared at the car, my mind racing. Had the driver returned? What had happened at the pizza place? Cautiously, I approached the vehicle, peering inside. The car was empty once again, the keys still in the ignition. I glanced around, but the street remained deserted, save for the relentless pounding of the rain. Stealing my nerves, I made the decision to get a closer look. I opened the car door and slid into the driver's seat, my eyes scanning the interior for any clues. The radio was still on, static crackling through the speakers. The dashboard was clean and tidy, no signs of a struggle. I searched the glove compartment and the center console, hoping to find some identification or contact information for the owner, 
but there was nothing, no registration, no insurance papers, no personal items of any kind. Frustrated, I leaned back in the seat, racking my brain. What the hell was going on here? First the missing pizza delivery, then the abandoned car, and now the strange scene at the pizza shop. It was all too bizarre to be a coincidence. Suddenly a flash of movement outside the car caught my eye. I jerked my head up, heart pounding, but there was nothing there. Just the rain falling in sheets against the windshield. I let out a shaky breath, trying to calm my nerves. Maybe I was just jumpy from all the strange occurrences. I needed to get a grip and think this through rationally. Deciding I needed to get back to my apartment and call the police, I reached for the door handle. But as my fingers touched the cold metal, a sudden realization hit me. The car was still running. I froze, my blood turning to ice. If the car was running, then that meant someone had to be here, close by. My eyes darted around the empty street, searching for any sign of movement. Slowly I turned the key in the ignition, cutting the engine. The sudden silence was deafening, save for the relentless patter of the rain. I held my breath, listening intently for any sound, any hint that I was not alone. But there was nothing. The street remained eerily quiet. Swallowing hard, I carefully opened the car door and stepped out, keeping low to the ground. I needed to get back to my apartment to call the authorities and report what I'd seen. Maybe they could make sense of this bizarre chain of events. As I crept along the sidewalk, my eyes were drawn to the ground. That's when I noticed it a faint trail of what looked like drops of blood leading away from the car and down the street. My heart lurched in my chest. Blood? What the hell had happened here? I followed the trail with my eyes, watching as it disappeared around the corner into the darkness. Without thinking, I found myself moving forward, drawn by a morbid curiosity. I had to know what had happened, had to find out the truth. The police would need all the information I could provide. The rain was still coming down hard, the wind whipping through the empty streets. As I rounded the corner, the trail of blood became more pronounced, the drops larger and more frequent. My stomach churned with dread, but I pressed on, driven by an overwhelming need to uncover the truth. Suddenly, the trail ended at the entrance to a narrow alley, the darkness swallowing it up. I hesitated, unsure if I should venture any further. What if there was someone or something lurking in the shadows, waiting to pounce? But my curiosity got the better of me. I had to know what had happened. Stealing my nerves, I stepped into the alley, the rain beating down on me from above. The alley was dark and damp, the walls closing in around me. I could barely see a few feet in front of me, the shadows obscuring my vision. I inched forward, my senses on high alert, every sound and movement making me jump. That's when I saw it a faint glimmer of light in the distance. Squinting, I made out the outline of a door, slightly ajar. My heart raced as I approached, the blood trail leading straight to it. Pausing for a moment, I took a deep breath and pushed the door open, bracing myself for what I might find. The hinges creaked as I pushed the door open, bracing myself for what I might find. The interior was dark, but a faint light flickered from somewhere deeper inside. Swallowing hard, I stepped over the threshold, my eyes slowly adjusting to the dim lighting. The air was thick and musty, the sound of dripping water echoing off the walls. As I moved forward, my foot crunched on something underfoot. Glancing down, I felt my stomach lurch. It was the remains of a cell phone. The screen shattered and the casing cracked. Bile rose in my throat as I realized this must have belonged to the missing pizza delivery driver. What had happened to him? Where was he now? I pressed on, my footsteps echoing ominously in the narrow corridor. The flickering light was growing stronger, and I could make out the outline of a doorway up ahead. Stealing my nerves, I approached the open door, peering inside. The room was small and cramped, with a single bare bulb hanging from the ceiling and in the center of the room, slumped on the floor, was a figure. My heart pounded in my ears as I stepped closer, my eyes widening in horror. It was the pizza delivery driver, his lifeless body sprawled on the ground. Blood was pooled around him, the crimson liquid stark against the dull concrete floor. I staggered backwards, my hands shaking. This couldn't be happening. How could this have happened? I needed to get out of here, to call the police, to get help. But as I turned to flee, a sudden movement in the shadows caught my eye. I froze, my breath catching in my throat as a figure emerged from the darkness. 
It was a man, tall and thin, his face obscured by a tattered hood. He stepped towards me, his movements slow and deliberate. To what happened here, I stammered, my voice trembling. Who are you? The man said nothing, his gaze fixed on me. I could feel the weight of his stare, even through the shadows. Panic seized me and I turned to run, but the man was faster. He lunged forward, his hands grasping at my jacket. I screamed, struggling to break free, but his grip was iron tight. Let me go, I cried, my voice echoing through the cramped space. Please let me go. But the man remained silent, his fingers digging into my flesh. I could feel the terror rising within me, the realization that I was trapped, that I might be next. Suddenly, a sound from outside caught my attention, the distant wail of sirens, growing steadily louder. The man froze, his head snapping towards the door. In that moment, I seized my chance. With a desperate burst of strength, I wrenched myself free from his grasp and bolted towards the exit, my heart pounding in my ears. I burst out into the rain-soaked alley, the sirens growing closer. I didn't stop running until I reached the street, where I flagged down a passing patrol car, gasping out the details of what I had witnessed. The police swarmed the alley, their flashlights cutting through the darkness. But when they emerged, their faces were grim. The car is wrecked, and the driver is nowhere to be found, one of the officers told me solemnly. We've called for backup and an ambulance, but I'm afraid the delivery man didn't make it. I felt the blood drain from my face, the reality of the situation sinking in. The delivery driver was dead, and the mysterious hooded figure had vanished without a trace. As the police questioned me further, I couldn't shake the haunting image of that shadowy figure, or the terrifying realization that I had narrowly escaped the same fate as the pizza delivery driver. I shuddered, knowing that the horror of that night would be seared into my memory forever. The vanishing delivery had become a living nightmare, a chilling reminder that sometimes, the scariest things lurk in the shadows, waiting to strike when you least expect it. It was a cold, moonless night in late October when the call came in. The young delivery driver, Michael, glanced down at the glowing screen of his phone and sighed. It was past 2 a.m. and he had been on the road for nearly 12 hours straight. All he wanted to do was get this last order dropped off and head home to his tiny apartment for some much needed rest. Still, he knew he couldn't ignore the alert. The delivery service he worked for, Foodsprint, prided itself on being available 24-7. 365 days a year. Customers expected their food to arrive promptly, no matter the hour. And Michael, who had only been on the job for a few months, couldn't afford to risk losing this gig. He needed the money too badly. With a resigned shrug, he tapped the screen to accept the order. A map popped up, showing the pickup location at a dimly lit diner on the edge of town, and the drop-off point deep in the heart of the industrial district. Michael frowned as he studied the route. That neighborhood was not somewhere he liked to venture, especially not in the dead of night. It was known for its high crime rates and abandoned factories, a breeding ground for all manner of unsavory characters. But orders were orders, and Michael knew he had no choice. Stealing himself, he fired up the engine of his battered Toyota Corolla and pulled out of the diner's parking lot, heading towards his final destination of the night. The drive through the deserted streets was eerie, to say the least. Michael couldn't help but feel like he was being watched, his eyes darting nervously from side to side as he navigated the winding roads. The streetlights were few and far between, casting long, ominous shadows that seemed to reach out towards his car. And the further he drove, the more dilapidated and abandoned the buildings became, their broken windows and crumbling facades as giving the entire area a distinctly haunted feel. Michael shivered, trying to push down the growing sense of unease that was pooling in the pit of his stomach, he knew he was being irrational, this was just another routine delivery, after all. But there was something about the oppressive silence and the unnatural darkness that set his nerves on edge. As he approached the address, his headlights illuminated a rundown, two-story house that looked like it was on the verge of collapse. The paint was peeling, the porch steps were crumbling, and the yard was overgrown with weeds. It was the kind of place that screamed stay away to any sane person. Michael hesitated for a moment, his fingers drumming nervously on the steering wheel. Every instinct was telling him to turn around and get the hell out of there. But then he glanced down at the address on his phone, double-checking that he had the right place. 
With a resigned sigh, he pulled into the driveway and parked his car. As he stepped out of the vehicle, Michael couldn't shake the feeling that he was being watched. He scanned the area, but the shadows seemed to swallow up any movement, making it impossible to tell if there was someone or something lurking in the darkness. Shaking his head, he tried to dismiss the feeling as just his imagination running wild. He had a job to do, and the sooner he got it done, the sooner he could get back to the safety of his car and head home. Grabbing the bag of food, Michael hurried up the cracked and uneven path to the front door. He paused for a moment, stealing himself, then reached out and rang the doorbell. The sound echoed eerily through the stillness of the night, and Michael couldn't help but wince at the shrill tone. There was no response. He waited a few more seconds, then tried the doorbell again. Still nothing. Frowning, he glanced down at his phone, double-checking the address. This was definitely the right place. Tentatively, he reached out and tried the doorknob. To his surprise, it turned easily in his hand, and the door swung open with a low, ominous creak. Michael hesitated, his heart pounding in his chest. Every instinct was telling him to turn around and leave, but the thought of the angry customer and the potential consequences from his employer kept him rooted to the spot. Hello. Michael peered cautiously into the dimly lit entryway, his eyes struggling to adjust to the darkness. The air was thick and stale, and he couldn't help but wrinkle his nose at the musty, almost rotten smell that hung in the air. Is anyone home, he called out, his voice wavering slightly. I have a delivery for this address. Still no response. Michael stood there for a moment, unsure of what to do. Every fiber of his being was screaming at him to get out of there, but the thought of the potential consequences from his job kept him rooted to the spot. With a resigned sigh, he stepped over the threshold and into the house. The interior was just as dilapidated as the outside. The wallpaper was peeling, the floors were creaky and uneven, and there was a thick layer of dust covering every surface. It was clear that no one had lived here for a very long time. Michael's footsteps echoed loudly as he made his way down the narrow hallway, the bag of food clutched tightly in his hands. He peered into the various rooms as he passed, but they were all empty and devoid of any signs of life. The further he went, the more the sense of unease grew, until it was almost palpable. Finally, he reached what appeared to be the living room. The curtains were drawn, casting the space in an eerie, twilight-like glow. Michael hesitated for a moment, then stepped inside. And that's when he saw it. Sprawled out on the tattered sofa was the body of a man, his eyes wide and staring sightlessly at the ceiling. Michael let out a strangled gasp, the bag of food slipping from his fingers and tumbling to the floor. For a moment, he was frozen in place, his heart pounding in his ears. Then, with shaking hands, he fumbled for his phone, his fingers clumsily dialing 911. As he waited for the operator to answer, Michael couldn't help but feel a growing sense of dread. Something about this whole situation just felt wrong. The way the man was positioned, the blank expression on his face, it all seemed too deliberate, too unnatural. And then, just as the operator's voice crackled to life on the other end of the line, Michael heard it. A faint, muffled sound, coming from somewhere deeper in the house. He froze, his breath catching in his throat as he strained to listen. At first he thought it might just be his imagination, but then he heard it again a soft, almost imperceptible whimper. Swallowing hard, Michael turned and began to make his way towards the sound, the 911 operator's voice fading into the background as he moved deeper into the house. The whimper grew louder and more insistent, and Michael felt a growing sense of dread and urgency. He reached a closed door at the end of the hallway, and without hesitation, he pushed it open. What he saw next would haunt him for the rest of his life. Curled up in the corner of the small, dingy bedroom was a young woman, her clothes tattered and her face streaked with tears. She looked up at him with wide, terrified eyes, and Michael felt his heart clench in his chest. Please, she whispered, her voice barely audible. You have to help me. Michael didn't even have time to respond before a sudden, deafening crash came from the living room. In the end, the young delivery driver never made it out of that cursed house alive.